Well, I'm just treating myself to a, a couple of impromptu hours. Um, got a bit fed up with work and I thought, could do with a bit of fishing today. So I've just, uh, just grabbed some ground bait and a bag of fuca, two or three bags of fuca, just to, uh, didn't have any bait, didn't have any natural baits left in the fridge after a, a busy week last week on the rivers. So um, this is an unexpected treat for me. And, uh, and I've come to a lovely scenic place as well, hopefully to catch a few. Nice bream is really what I'm expecting. Hopefully, uh, I'm fishing a method feeder, so hopefully my rod get dragged around sooner or later. There's a few tension here as well, a lot of tension here. Um, so that would be nice as well. Well, as one has found my bait. I had a little bit of a wait just for them to show some interest. I had lots of liners. And I find that sometimes with, uh, not say artificial bait, but you know, it's not always as instant pellet and what have you. They seem to want to just taste it first, get to know the color or whatever. And I've actually had to come off. Um, I've had several casts now and I've had to actually come off the, uh, the bigger baits, the bright colored baits and put something imitating the feed. Um, and in this case, it was a little five, little five mil yellow um, Fuka pellet. Quite a nice, quite a nice bream, probably three, three and a half pound, maybe four pound. But on a little tiny yellow pellet, five mil. Slightly bigger than the ones I'm feeding in the ground bait. There's me flat method. I've changed to the flat method as well. You can see it's still got bait on it. There was little micro swell up a little bit. And I'm on a hair rigged little five mil yellow pellet. And that's the first fish of the day. I bring about three, three and a half pound. Nice one to start with. Let's hope there's a few of his brothers and sisters out there. My original idea was that I would, I would use the, the coil feeder because I think I can put a little bit more feed in with that and I can fill the center of the coil feeder up with ground bait, just plain ground bait. That's never going to come out. So that just fills the coil up. And then the idea is that I can put ground bait around the outside, which will contain the pellet and, uh, and then use a mixture of colors, whatever I want to experiment. And, and of course, I, it's up to me how much ground bait I can put around the outside. I can put quite a lot and I can leave it fairly loose so I can just squeeze it gently. And that, most of that ground bait then will come off quite quick. Go down to the bottom, the whole point of a method feeder is that I'm feeding a tight area on the bottom, but it will then break up quite quickly once it's down there. And I can get quite a lot of feed in fairly quickly. And that's how I, that's how I was planning on starting and have, have started today, but um, it didn't produce any bites. So it's, I'm only on a short session and it's that time of year when the water temperatures are starting to plummet a little bit with colder nights after a very warm spell that we've had previously. So I've become a little bit aware that I could easily overfeed, even, you know, even in a water like this where there's a lot of fish, a lot of bream. If they're not in the mood, very, diff very, very easy to overfeed. So, um, I've got two options then. I can stay on the coil, coil feeder and just squeeze, squeeze the ground bait containing the feed harder. I'd do that anyway once the fishing becomes more prolific, just so the fish aren't, so, so basically you're making them try to fight over the hook bait that you, you know, that you want them to take and not just feed on the uh, ground bait around the feeder. Um, 
So I could carry on using the coil feeder and just squeeze the bait on harder so it doesn't come off um, as quickly. Or I can switch, and this is what I've actually done, I've switched to the little flat method feeder, which I'm only putting bait on one side, so I can't put that much on. And, um, and I'm using a mould just to tuck my, tuck my hook bait into it first and then mould the bait on one side of the feeder. It's a lot lighter set up and it lands nicely and uh, quietly. And there's no way I'm going to overfeed fish like that. And because I've been having lots of little nudges and line bites, it shows me there's fish there not really willing to feed. Not just yet anyway. So I'm having to sort of fish for one fish at a time, not put too much bait at them and just try and work out what I can actually get a bite on. And the last two fish have come on a little tiny yellow food capellet, five millimeters, tiny. Previous to that, I was putting two on and, and the big, big uh, pop-ups bright to try and get a quick, quick fish and that hasn't worked. So uh, there's another line bite there now. I just had to be a little bit patient. And I think with my experience of using this bait, that the fish just have to become used to it. And sometimes they will show a distinct preference for colors. Sometimes it's red, sometimes it's yellow. Yellow is a really good color most of the time, to be honest with you but sometimes they'll show a, dis a distinct preference for red. But I've always found, using the Fuca, that you have to feed it and get them used to it. In the past, I've fed yellow, fished yellow and caught fish, and I've put a red one on the hook and failed, even though I've been catching quite steady on yellow. And it's not until I've started to introduce red pellets into the feed, suddenly I'll get one on red. And then sometimes red will become the best bait. But it's funny. Fish are funny things, aren't they? Bream particularly. They can be quite finicky at times. And, um, and I found with these, this particular bait that you have to offer them and let them get used to it. And then they're confident to take what's on the hook. And it becomes really good after that almost like shelling peas sometimes. The session, this session, I don't know. It's, it's gonna be a short one anyway, but I've had two fish and I've had to sort of use my brain to, uh, to think what works. And at the moment it's small baits and just having to wait for the liners to develop and then it's gone round a couple of times with a proper bite. So we'll see, I'm gonna keep trying open open mind, keep trying, and now and again I'll go back on the coil feeder and perhaps introduce a little bit more feed to get a response. But it all depends on, one, one other thing I did, because I had several casts with just, just liners, and I'm not talking about great big wrap rounds, I'm just talking about very small touches, like the fish are just brushing the line, they're not swimming around, I think that's down to the fact that the water's definitely cooler today. They're not really swimming around looking for bait. They're just touching the line, not moving very far. Sign of finicky fish, I think. It's a little bit of a smaller fish, I think, this one. Sort of like skimmer size, really. But again, it took a little while after the feeder had gone in. I was getting a little probably three or four minutes of little line bites, little nudges. Let's, fish are definitely there, but it hadn't been instant. And uh, so this one's only about a pound, pound and a quarter. Again, on a little five mil yellow Fuca hook bait. again on the flat feeder. So 
it looks to me like at this moment in time they're not feeding prolifically. I'm still very much testing the water, finding out the, the colour they want. It's taken a while actually. Might try a red one on next time, but I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep it small, a little five mil pellet because I had the bigger ones on, the brighter ones, and they were just getting ignored. And I knew there was fish there around the feeder because I had line bites, little nudges. But they were ignoring the, the big bright pop-up baits, which so often are the ones that, you know, the ones that do get noticed and will give you a quick bite, but not, not at this moment. So it's interesting that I've got this little array of baits to try. I'm feeding both red and yellow anyway, so I've had two fish on the yellow. I've just put a red one on. Never know, we might get a quicker bite. That might be an indication that just perhaps they might want a red, a red bait, as bream sometimes do. The beauty with the little flat feeders is that they Clip in really quietly. They don't go in with a big kaplush, uh, like a ball, a ball of bait. So if they are a little bit finicky, then it's it's a good way. Just it's a qu nice, quiet way not to disturb the maybe feed you know fish that aren't feeding too avidly to start with. explain how I'm actually rigged up. I'm using a 12 foot rod, six pound mono line, nice and simple. And on this, on this particular rod, I've got the line running straight through my feeder, which is a flat, porky, nicer porky feeder, flat bed feeder. This one's a little unusual in that it hasn't got hoops. It's got just little, um, little straight pegs which stick up and just grip the ground bait so I'm just filling the feeder by simply pressing the ground bait and the pellet down onto those pegs six little pegs and I'm using a mold just to compact it a little bit I could use my palm there's nothing wrong with that but it's windy today and um, because it's a flat feeder it can be a little lopsided and when conditions are perfect and you're not fishing very far out i would just put the ground bait in my hand press it down not be too fussy today i'm fishing out a little bit i'm probably fishing about 35 meters 40 meters and and there's quite quite a solid wind from right to left especially I'm in a little bit of shelter here with these reeds, but sometimes it just catches the feeder. I'm having to compensate a little bit by casting slightly to the right and trying to preempt what the wind is going to do on the cast. So I'm using a, I'm using a mould just to compact the, uh, the feed onto the, just that one side of the flat porky feeder. My line goes straight through this tube and out and then all I've got is a hook length which is very short about three inches with a swivel at the top and I've got a size 16 hook with a little hair with a quick stop on the end of the on the end of the hair which is uh, which is through the pellet and so basically that's just joined to my main line at the swivel with a really strong knot and I use a Palomar knot which is a really simple knot it's worth looking it up to see how to tie it. it's so simple you wouldn't believe but it's probably the strongest knot that I know of you need a really strong knot because you know this this method will attract some big fish carp tench 
bream need a strong knot. And then above the feeder, I've got a little sliding stop which grips the line and just stops the feeder running up too far. I can leave it like that with a bit of a gap, if you like, so that the fish can actually pull the line through the feeder. But generally, I lock it up because usually you, when you get a fish on, it's already hooked. When you get that indication on the tip and you can see it's, you know, you can see the fish is on, it's already hooked. But there are days when I've given the fish a little bit of time. Maybe I should try that today because, to be honest, you know, the fish aren't really exactly hanging themselves at the moment. There are some fisheries that do enforce a rule that you can use nothing above the feeder. The feeder must be free running. In that instance, I would just leave that off and so that the, the feeder can run up the line. In the unlikely event that you snap off, the fish can then just pull everything out from through the feeder and it's, it's a dead safe rig. There isn't a rule here for that, so I'm, I'm just using that just to stop, stop the feeder running up the line when I'm filling it, things like that. But really and truly, it's just as effective without the stop. I'll just show you what I've got on the other rod. And this is the one I started on. It's a, it's a coil feeder. It's quite an old fashioned feeder. We still sell them at Nicer and they're very, very popular, but, um, it's, it's going back in time a little bit to when all method feeders were simply to put a big ball of ground bait round. It didn't matter if it had a plastic frame. Some of them had fluted plastic frames. I've always um, favored the, the metal coil, a stainless steel coil, um, which just, uh, covers the tube. It's exactly the same as that feeder. It's got a tube straight through. It runs, runs up and down the line. Same underneath with the swivel. It sits on the swivel to the, to the hook. And uh, it's got a, a lead loading in the middle. Uh, this one's a 28 gram feeder, which is reasonably heavy. I put it on because there's a, of this side wind. So I'm fishing reasonably heavy so I can cast it nice and straight. And the coil itself holds all, obviously holds all the ground bait. And when I use this, I start by just putting neat ground bait into the coil, just squeeze it in like so. And that ground bait will stay there all day. You'll find that you'll still have that particular bit of ground bait on at the end of the session. That stays, that doesn't, that doesn't break down. So that doesn't need to hold any feed as such, no pellets. The feed with the pellet is put on the outside of the coil. So I just cover the coil with the pellet enriched feed. And then depending on how I want to feed, I might just leave it loose like that. I've only squeezed that twice three times fairly softly and I might start a session like that so I can cast that in it will go down to the bottom and because it's only lightly squeezed most of that ground bait with you can see the pellets that are within it will break down quite quickly and make a little bit of a patch of feed on the bottom and I'll do that for a little while just just to form a little bit of a baited area for, to track the fish in but once the fish are there, once I start to catch or once I start to get indications that the fish are on that little patch of ground bait, I don't really want to feed them anymore. Not, not, not really, just give them little tastes. And so all my casts after that, once I'm confident the fish have arrived, I'll give that, that bait a really good squeeze at least half a dozen times. Now, that bait will take much longer to break down. And oft times, when the fish have arrived and start to feed really well, it won't break down at all. The fish come along and really the only bait available is the one on my hook. The rest of it is still locked into that ground bait. And yeah, they might peck it a little bit and you might see the odd little movement on the tip while they do that. But really and truly, the only bait they're gonna get initially is the one on my, is the one on my hook. 
And that's what I'm trying to achieve, a bite as soon as possible. Obviously in a competition, I want a bite as soon as possible. So that's why I'm trying to lock the potential feed on the feeder. And if I get a bite straight away, that's great. Now we have to regulate that, of course. We don't want to deprive the fish so much that they all swim away to someone else's swim. So we have to be a little bit mindful that we need to give them something. But the whole point of the method feeder is that we're, we've got our hook bait very close to what's attracting them, i.e. that ball of ground bait. And as long as we can get away um, with not giving them too much, then ultimately we should catch more fish by only offering them, in reality, a hook bait. And that's really the two main differences between the coil feeder and the flatbed feeder where we do only feed a very small amount on the on the flatbed feeder anyway. Let me just put this away. Yeah, so we've had we've had some skimmers, nice bream. Probably the biggest has been about three and a half pound tonight, which is by you know it's not the biggest fish in here by any means. But, um, and we've had a nice little tench as well um, that just broke it up a little bit. It was a surprise. Uh, so that took a like into the, the small, small pellet as well, small yellow pellet. That's been the standout bait tonight. Nearly everything on a, on a small pellet. One thing that definitely did work, um, nothing to really do with the tackle, I'm going to go back on, have the last few casts on the flat method, just introducing small amounts of feed. But um, using this rig seemed to be, for whatever reason, producing more line bites, but initially no fish. And so common sense, so I've had to think hard tonight, common sense meant, are the fish my side of the feeder, or are they just milling around not taking? But just as an experiment, I, um, I, because I'm clipped up on the reel at about 40 meters, I wound on about four turns, probably about two and a half, three meters of line, and um, thinking that you know maybe the fish are for some reason my side. Of the, of the feed, giving me line bites, but not proper bites. And it wasn't long before the tip started to go round with, with a proper bite, and that was, that was quite eye-opening. And um, it, it's something that's quite common, but particularly when you're using a method feeder of any type really, but particularly a method feeder, in that after a while, I think you get quite a bit of feed, uh, it's still slightly on the feeder, hasn't all loosened, and um, it's still there when you either catch a fish or you just reel in to recast, and you're spreading that feed, it's coming off them first few turns of the reel. So some of that feed is, um, is this side of, really where you want it to be. So just now and again, if that happens, you, you're getting line bites, and I've had that tonight, line bites, but not catching. Just coming in a little bit shorter range uh, will put you on that feed. And if sometimes if you've, you've caught a few fish on a patch, the fish start to get a little bit wary of being there. As much as they want to feed and they want your bait, you know, they can sense it's become maybe a bit of a danger area. And if, of course, you've got feed in another part of your swim, they're naturally going to go to that where it's no, no fish have been caught. So you've just got to reposition. And, um, and that's what I've had to do tonight, just reposition and come in a little bit shorter, reduce the line bites, and it's actually the tip's gone round with proper bites and I've uh, and I've caught I've caught a few fish by doing that and you might find you have to do that two or three times every now and again perhaps every 
every half an hour, 40 minutes. As soon as you start getting them liners and you're not getting the proper bites, just think about coming a little bit shorter. We always think that fish sometimes spook and back off your feed and sometimes that does happen. We have to go the other way, have to actually increase the range to find them again. But that, if that was the case, then you wouldn't get any line bites. So in that case, if, if, if you'd been catching and then you, you stopped getting bites of any sort, proper bites, line bites, it's all, always worth going a little bit longer. They're, they're, the fish have backed off. But in this instant, I was getting liners, um, which show me that the fish were this side. Uh, tactic to bear in mind. And it's, it's been a case of um, finding the right bait and it's most definitely been a little five mil yellow, little five mil yellow Fuca pellet. The bright colors haven't worked tonight. Uh, as I said earlier, another day that would be the way to get a quick bite, but it's not been like that. I think the fish are moving much slower tonight and they're just, you know, they're feeding a little bit um, tentatively. And it's been interesting, really, really nice, short little session. I wish I had a bit more time, but the light is going to defeat me eventually. Plus I'm getting hungry as well. So just have, I'll have a few more cars. Hope I can get a late, uh, a late straggler and maybe it will be a big one.